Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com. We are talking about tantric sex and vital sex and the topic for this video is uh, sexual conditioning. This is another very important concept to understand and to work with consciously. This idea is very simple. It is that when you think about tantric sex, you have a whole lot of energetic and emotional associations coming to you. What this means is that your mind and your body are packed, saturated with frames, beliefs, emotional reactions, feelings, behaviors that are all associated with the tantric sex, with the, the sexual energy. So this conditioning comes from different sources. The first one is just a physical conditioning. It means that you inherit a certain way of being as a human being where suddenly you have uh, energetic, uh, sensual, uh, instinctual responses happening just because your sexual energy is getting activated. It means that we are plugged in sexually from birth. There is already sexual energy flowing through us and then eventually starts growing, uh, being activated through puberty, then you become a teenager and so on. So there is a certain natural flow of the sexual energy that gets that is simply there because we have a body and we are human beings. So this programming comes already from far before we are even born. You know, it starts being programmed in our system by the force of nature, the natural instincts that we are born with. And then there is everything that society is putting on top of that. So the conditioning is uh, education coming from, you know, what we read in books, the music, the uh, examples that our parents give us, our friends, uh, and uh, everything that we hear in the pop culture, you know, the romantic stories, the fairy tales, and all that. This is going to, going to create a certain picture about uh, what sexual energy is about and how we are supposed to be using it. These are our teachings, and uh, our parents very often are the first example of how to be behave sexually. So if your parents have a very suppressed attitude towards sex, most of the times, that's what is going to be projected first on you until you realize that this is not the model maybe that you want to apply and then you start developing new behaviors. Um, but what is important is that we have a lot of sexual conditioning around us. If you want to imagine what sexual, how much sexual conditioning we have, try to imagine what it would feel if you didn't have any emotional associations, no actions, nothing associated with sexual energy, that sexual energy never manifested itself in any form in your system, in your life, and then suddenly you would start being able to build it from scratch. What are the sexual behaviors that you would adopt? What are the things that you would do that would be um, spontaneously the best possible sexual experience that you can bring into your life. So this is the dilemma that that you have, that the totality of humankind has. It is that we are not functioning from on an empty canvas. It's not just an empty canvas. It's like thousands, millions of years of sexual conditioning as a human race. So when you are born, a little baby, <laughs> you come out, ta-da! You know, the first few years, it's totally sexual, sexual innocence. You know, you start discovering a little bit of pleasure. You start, wow, oh, mom, look what I have. It's, it's interesting. Look what happens, you know, and then phew, shame and guilt starts coming in. Don't do that. It's bad. You're a bad boy or you're a bad girl. And then the conditioning starts. Oh, my God, I don't want... I want my mother to love me. I want my father to, to love me. Therefore, I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to suppress it and behave according to the rules that society and education are putting on me. Wow. Fast forward 20, 30, 40 years later, this conditioning is still there, still in the building blocks. Want to test it? Go to your neighbor and say, I love sex. How easy does that feel to you? Or on the dance floor, start moving in ways that are erotic. Start moving your hips, you know, and start really being sexual in your intention, in, in the movements. You know, why? 
why would that create a sense of oh, shame or that's not all right? This whole stuff is conditioning. It's because we have certain boundaries, certain values, certain ways of looking at it, where we think this is right, this is wrong, this is slutty, it's bad. And this is good because it's soft and refined and gentle. And uh, so we have all this conditioning. And some people are extremely free in their conditioning. You know, they function from a place where the sexual energy is naturally flowing. And some other people will be extremely, you know, stacked in certain behaviors or beliefs. And then you add on top of that uh, traumatic experiences, you know, that come and even create more blockages. And then you have, you know, all these abusive patterns that come in. And, uh, you know, you add the rape and porn and all those dysfunctional uh, aspects of um, erotic shadows. And then that's it. You end up with the situation which is a little bit messy on the planetary level. So what we try to do here with the tantric sex is bring back the focus to harmony, to love, beauty, pleasure, mindsets that are empowering to you as a sexual being. And uh, if you don't have a system, you know, you don't, you, you function a little bit trying to figure out things by yourself, eventually you're going to figure it out. Eventually you will come up to a place where you go like, oh, I can see how to use my sexual energy in positive ways and uh, how to use that as an empowering force in my system. So what we are doing here with the, the tantric sex idea is really giving you some shortcuts. You say, well, that part here, you don't need to reinvent it because we already have been talking about that for a long time. So here, grab this idea and this will speed up your evolution. This is really what we are doing here with uh, giving you some hints about sexual education, tantric sex. Um, yeah, tantric sex ideas. Um, so when you have sexual conditioning, how do you recondition yourself? What do you do to create a new landscape or a new mindset? So, of course, you know, going to some workshops, learning, educating yourself and starting to get familiar with aspects of your sexual energy that you didn't know were there. You know, like you might discover some pressure points, you might discover ways of touching your lover where you go, oh my God, they're really responding with lots of pleasure here. What's going on? So you start really understanding and you start experimenting and playing and learning, uh, you know, new things that you didn't know before. Next time somebody comes to you and says, sex is shameful. You should be ashamed of yourself for feeling desire and feeling pleasure. You go like, hang on a sec, why, why are you saying that? Where does that come from? Who says that pleasure is, is a sin? Where? How? <laughs> How was this idea generated? What role did this idea play in our human evolution? Is it still appropriate? Is, is it still needed? Is it still serving me or us? You start questioning and, and eventually reconditioning. Then when somebody comes and says, you should be ashamed of feeling pleasure, you go like, actually I don't. I should not feel ashamed. I should feel proud. I should feel grateful. I should feel thankful. I'm thankful for the pleasure that flows through my body when somebody is activating me sexually. Wow. So you just said something new. You have a whole new case and you have a whole new set of, of beliefs and mind, mindsets. Again, what I'm saying here is not something that I'm forcing on you in any way. These are just open suggestions. If you resonate with it, play with it. If it's not for you, that's no problem. That's perfectly okay. Another core idea on reconditioning your beliefs and your uh, patterns around sex is to take really small steps, you know, one step at a time. For instance, if somebody comes to me and says, you know what, I don't like physical touch. I don't like it when somebody touches me. And then we check in, we realize that there, there has been, you know, traumatic abuses in their childhood. Then we start checking and then you realize that the, the best way to get used to physical touch again and start enjoying it again is to take really small steps. Let me hold your hand. I'm just going to hold your hand here. How does that feel? So if you have a lover who is uncomfortable with certain aspect of their, you know, sexual practices or, or energy, try to take really small steps in that direction and let them experience stretching a tiny little bit, very, very uh, small step, stretching their comfort zone. 
what does it feel when it's a little bit uncomfortable and then you go back to comfort and then you go back to uncomfortable and then the, the uncomfort goes like actually i'm start feeling a little bit of pleasure here i'm starting to feel like a sense of comfort so um, it's exactly with the example that i was just giving you uh just touching somebody's hand you know after a while you go like oh i'm starting to actually feel the connection i'm starting to feel the energy exchange it actually feels good i want more of that okay you get the picture right so the core concept here for this video is sexual conditioning check it in see how it feels see where you are at in terms of that and see what you can do if some of this conditioning is no longer serving you with what are you going to replace it with?